الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم stated that whoever recites the Buddha Park uh, 80 times on a Friday Allah Ta'ala will forgive 80 years of his sins uh, so therefore we should this uh, Sayyidul Ayyam uh, Jumu'ah is the day Yawm al-Mashhud the day in which angels descend and specifically to recite uh, to make a record of who recites Durood on the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Sallu ala al-Habib Salatu wassalamu alayka ya Rasulullah wa ala alika wa ashabika ya Habib Allah Jazakallah for uh, joining us again at Raza Masjid um, so today's topic, uh, the three main causes uh, of the Muslim downfall, the three of the biggest faults, uh, the problems that we have in the Muslim Ummah. Mufti Ahmad Yar Khan uh, Naimi Rahmatullah Ali, uh, explains that the three main reasons for the weakness Muslims, even though there's hundreds of reasons, but we can, you know, sort of fundamentally uh, link those hundreds of reasons to three fundamental and uh, principal reasons. Uh, number one, the growing uh, conflict, uh, ideological conflict, uh, meaning sects and groups within the Muslim Ummah that are forming like rapidly on a daily basis. Uh, number two, is uh, personal grudges amongst the Ummah, the hatred amongst Muslims and uh, you know divisions based on caste systems etc and the third cause is the un-Islamic customs that Muslims uh, practice uh, so regularly customs which are against Sharia or which are uh, useless, expensive and uh, don't have any uh, benefit in them. And these are the three main causes, fundamental root causes of the problems of the Muslims uh, today. Uh, if you look at the causes of these three, the, co- the solutions of these three causes, the solution for the first cause, which was the growing number of sects and the uh, ideological differences inside the Ummat. Um, you know, there was a piece of advice that Peter Sayyid Jama'at Ali Shah Sab, uh, used to give this piece of advice. Uh, you know, change your clothes, you wear fine clothes, change them. Uh, change you can change your home you can change your foods you can change the dunya as much as you want and you know uh, innovate and develop and progress in the dunya but when it comes to the deen make sure your deen is old you know don't uh, adapt a new deen have new clothes adapt new uh, residence new foods but not a new deen deen wohi tera so bars wala apna ikhtiyar karo stick to that 14th century old deen of yours so our uh, nabi is he says hamara nabi purana deen purana quran purhan purana ye cheeze nayi na karo so uh, don't innovate and change your your prophet or your deen or your uh, quran and this is a piece of advice that we say jamaat ali shah sab uh, used to give so this uh, involves Sticking to the Sunnah of the Holy Prophet ﷺ and also gaining the acquisition of knowledge. It's very important. When a person has knowledge and he studied the Salaf Salih in the Quran and Hadith, then there's less chance of him having an Aqidah which is uh, misguided or misled. So sadly, today due to a lack of knowledge amongst Muslims, Muslims are influenced uh, by many different opinions and many different schools of thought. And that just creates confusion. Uh, furthermore the second cause of our problems which was the mutual um, 
grudges and hatred amongst Muslims, personal you know, ill feelings that Muslims have for each other. Uh, we need to bear in mind that uh, there are two main reasons for our personal grudges amongst each other, not getting uh, on uh, we, uh, amongst ourselves. Uh, the first is in not being able to control our tempers. So, غُسَيْ قُقَابُ مَنَا رَكْنَا And the second is حُقُوكِ شَرْعِيَا كِي حِفَاظَتْ Har shaks apne liye chahta hai. Everyone wants that other people fulfill their duties towards them. But when it comes to us fulfilling the duties towards other people, we're very weak in that. So if we manage to control our tempers and also secondly, fulfill whatever duties Shariat has given you. Shariat has given you, there's no two people when we live in a society, Shariat in Pak has given every single individual uh, a set of duties, roles uh, that they have to fulfill. So controlling our temper, the second is um, to fulfill your hukuk, understand again knowledge. And uh, many of us are aware of the duties of um, neighbors, the duties of general Muslims, Muslims in general. You know, uh, we do hear about the duties of parents. Uh, you know, uh, and more uh, recently, we are beginning to hear more from ulama about the duties of um, children as well, parents' duties towards their children. But still, there are many things. You know, how should you behave? What a Muslim's conduct in the workplace should be, and generally, what things a Muslim uh, in the community what he can say regarding st strangers and how he should control himself, what is and isn't allowed for him. And just an extra point regarding this problem is ajizi tawazu you know humility is very very important uh, a lot of the times our personal grudges are due to anger and due to uh, arrogance as well pride pride makes us stubborn uh, and prevents us from accepting our mistakes or apologizing to people uh, and accepting advice from other people as well and there's a hadith in mubarakah the messenger of allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam stated uh, that there's an angel, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, f appointed an angel with every single human being and when that person, when he lowers himself due to humility, when he lowers his head due to humility and your true humility, not hypocritical humility, that angel lifts his head, raises his head but when a person tries to lift himself, then the angel lowers him uh, and the meaning of that hadith is that if you are humble for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah ta'ala will raise you. Allah ta'ala will give you a lofty status inshallah. If not in this dunya, then in the afterlife. But on the contrary, if you try to raise yourself and try to prove uh, your own self with arrogance and vanity, then Allah ta'ala will uh, debase or degrade that uh, in, uh, individual. Coming to now the third main cause of the Muslim downfall which is uh, so many customs and uh, irreligious you know unlawful customs amongst uh, the Muslims and also some customs which are not unlawful but they are very expensive and they place the burden of pressure financial pressure on other uh, parts of society uh, when we talk about uh, if we talk about examples of unlawful customs amongst us uh, weddings I've spoken about quite frequently the dancing and the music and the free mixing of men and women in our weddings is against the Sharia Sayyidi Allah Hazrat Rahmatullah when he talks about the duties that parents have towards their children he talks about preserving, if you have daughters, then preserve their chastity, teach them about modesty and, you know, uh, develop their modesty. And he talks about, you know, make sure you don't take uh, your daughters to uh, weddings where there are mixed gatherings and there's dancing and music, uh, etc. And if we just look at this issue of uh, music, which is a prevalent thing, in our communities and it's considered harmless 
But remember, music is like the tool of the shaitan, which the shaitan uses to distract us from the recitation of the Quran. Uh, if you want to hear about what is the benefit of saving one's ears from uh, haram, you know, the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said when someone avoids haram inside the dunya for the sake of, for the pleasure of Allah ta'ala and due to fear of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, then Allah ta'ala uh, rewards him for that abstinence inside this dunya even before he dies. And the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said on the day of Qiyamat, Allah ta'ala will announce or will have it announced where are those people who uh, used to save their ears and their eyes from uh, satanic uh, musical instruments. And so then a group of people who had saved the pious God-fearing people will be uh, distinguished and will be set aside separately. Uh, and the angels will make these God-fearing people uh, uh, sit on hills which are made of musk uh, and ambergris. And then Allah Ta'ala will say to the angels, uh, Inko meri tasbih or tahmeed sunao. Uh, you know, uh, praise me, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, so that they can hear you. And then the angels will praise and glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, in a voice, in voices that have never been heard of before, in amazing uh, voices. So this is the reward for people who save their eyes, their ears from musical instruments, from uh, looking at and listening to. Allah wa ta'ala will make them, uh, will satisfy, you know, the, the, the wanting to hear beautiful sounds. And that's why people uh, listen to music. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will uh, bless you with the reward of listening to tasbih and the glorification of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it, there will be sounds in Jannat and in the afterlife which you've never heard of. It's such amazing, you know, uh, remark, incredible sounds that would please and satisfy you so if you can resist that if we can resist that temptation inside this dunya inshallah that's the reward inside the akhirat and a similar hadith another hadith about the benefits of avoiding you know listening uh, to unlawful things the messenger of allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said uh, that whoever uh, listens to uh, music or singing illicit singing uh, deliberately inside the dunya, then he will not hear the sound of the Ruhani Yeen inside heaven. And one of the companions asked, O Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what are the Ruhani Yeen? And he Alayhi Salatu Wasallam said, the Ruhani uh, Yeen are the Qaris, the reciters uh, inside Jannat. So uh, the Ruhanian uh, people who are in paradise and would have saved them, uh, their, uh, their ears from music, inshallah, Allah Ta'ala will bless them with this listening to this qiraat in unbelievable uh, voices. So this is something that we should do tawbah from. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said when a person raises his voice with a song, Allah Ta'ala appoints a devil, two devils uh, sit on each of his shoulders and they kick him with their feet until he stops singing. Uh, so it's possible that all of you know, uh, when people listen to music, uh, the moves, their body language and the way they dance. Uh, so it could be linked to this Hadith Mubarakah, but there's actually two uh, devils sat on their angels kicking them until they stop singing. Uh, so this could explain the movements and the dance moves of people. Uh, so also in the Qur'an Kareem, Allah wa Ta'ala um, talks about how the shaitan, the voice of the shaitan, وَاسْتَفْزِزْ مَنِ اسْتَطَعْتَ مِنْهُمْ بِسَوْتِكْ And misguide whoever you want with your voice. Allah Ta'ala says uh, to the shaitan, Allah Ta'ala challenges the shaitan, misguide whoever you want with your voice, use your voice or Iblis, to miskind whoever you want, but my servants, you will have no control over them. 
And this ayat karima the uh, commentators of the Quran say that the voice of the shaitan is singing and musical instruments. So that's his sound. So that's his da'wat. When musical instruments are the da'wat of the shaitan. And vasvasa is also the voice of the shaitan is what you hear inside you. But the people who are mukhlisin, the sincere people, shaitan cannot have any control over them. These days people say, well, music is food for the soul. Uh, Music and uh, musical instruments are not food. Uh, not food. Gaane baje aur musiki ye to ruh mein begar peda karte hain. They destroy. They uh, annihilate the soil. Uh, the soul. They do. They are not food for uh, the soul. Um, they take away from you the desire and the passion to worship, to pray namaz, and worship. And they take away the lazat and the sweetness of ibadat. So they take away. If anything, music takes away. Uh, the pleasure of the soul You know A common complaint is People don't feel like Reading the Quran Even when they do recite The Quran Sheikh, They have to force themselves To recite the Quran And when they do They don't feel uh, You know The spirituality That they wish they did And when they pray Namaz Acha namaz mein dil nahi lagta So music takes away That spiritual tranquility And that serenity You know That peace and comfort So it's not food for the soul If anything It's depriving the soul Of the food and the nourishment, the spiritual nourishment that the uh, soul uh, truly requires. So music, if anything, it murders a person's modesty and a person's uh, shame. Uh, so saying that the music is food for the soul is a, is a satanic slogan, it's a shaitani nara. And especially, you know, uh, sisters, uh, women are more uh, delicate uh, when it comes to being in, uh, influenced by music and the, the, the ulama say that music uh, this is like the stepping stone or it instigates towards fornication as well it arouses lust and indecent uh, improper uh, shameless uh, desires inside the heart so it's sort of you know uh, music, music is uh, something that takes towards lust and the fulfillment of lust in unlawful uh, ways. Uh, Shaykh ibn Arabi Rahmatullah he said that uh, tunes, uh, they are, uh, it's your animal soul inside you that is affected, that is inspired by tunes. As far as the human soul, the ruh insani is inside you, that is not inspired or fascinated by music and tunes. It's fa that's fascinated by knowledge and education and uh, enlightenment, wisdom and intellect. So these were just a few ahadith about uh, music since I was talking about customs. Uh, of marriage customs that we need to rectify as well. Some of our customs may be jais, but they put, you know, unnecessary pressure like our janazas. You know, uh, we we have a custom now of feeding everyone. If someone passes away in our family, we'll arrange food for everyone who attends the janaza. Uh, although that, you know, uh, it's arguable that they, that may be jais, but it's pushing. You know, there's already so many expenses. People are worried when a family member passes away. And there's so many expenses of burial and people are worried, uh, the family are obviously concerned. Um, so to add on expenses of having to feed everyone in the janaza, that's not necessary. And to have, like tija, let me just clarify, you know, tija foods and jalisma mehfils are brilliant. And these are uh, a representation of our maslik, the maslik uh, of Sunnis and the, the, the school of thought of Sayyidina Imam Ahmad Raza Khan Barelvi Rahmatullah Ali. Uh, but to do tijas in such a way, we spend so much money. For some people who are rich and affluent, Allah Ta'ala has blessed them you know, profusely. For them to arrange a big feast um, is quite easy and no problem at all. But there's other people in society which will, have, which will struggle to have big tija mehfils and jalisma mehfils. So it's like a financial burden that we're putting on them. So I'm not saying we stop the mehfils, but we control the expenditure inside uh, our Tija and Isa al sawab mehfils I'm certainly not saying let's stop the mehfils These mehfils of Isa al sawab are of They are our identity As Sunnis As Barelvis Alhamdulillah So here's a beautiful verse You know regarding customs And how we should uh, Practice the Sunnah And try to abstain from un-Islamic customs Which sadly Due to being in the company of Hindus It's very likely as well That some of our grand 
parents you know many generations ago actually were hindus as well and but when sometimes even if a, a hindu or a non-muslim converts and reverts to islam it's very hard for them to give up their uh, old habits as is illustrated finally in this ayat karima allah ta'ala says in surah baqarah verse number 208 ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu dkhulu fi as-silmi kaffa wa la tattabi'u khutubat ash-shaytan innahu lakum aduwwun mubin Imam Ahmad Raza Khan Bareilly translates this verse Ey Iman walo Islam mein pure daakhil ho aur shaitan ke kadmo par na chalo beshak wo tumhara khulla dushman hai O believers enter Islam totally completely do not follow the footsteps of the shaitan indeed he is your open enemy Now the background of that verse is very interesting there was a companion before this verse was revealed there was a companion uh, Hazrat Abdullah bin Salam radhiyallahu ta'ala who used to be a Jew and he reverted to Islam and he was actually a scholar he was a very learned a very practicing jew as well uh, but when he reverted to islam he converted to islam he sort of still practiced some of the laws of uh, sayyidina musa the prophet musa's shariat so he continued to follow some of the things from his previous uh, religion for example jews respect saturday uh, give special reverence to saturday and they avoid eating the meat and the milk of camels uh, and eating the milk of uh, yeah, um, eating the the meat and uh, consuming the milk of camels this is something which is halal in islam it's not wajib it's not uh, necessary it's not farz but sayyidina abdullah bin salam radiyallahu ta'ala anhu he thought to himself well these things are only jaiz they're only mubah in islam anyway they're not wajib so if i uh, refrain from camel meat, consuming camel meat and consuming camel milk. Uh, then I'm practicing. I'm still respecting my old. I'm respecting what I used to do before, and I'm not doing anything haram in Islam either. So now, uh, outwardly, this may think, uh, you know, someone may think, well, that's harmless. But that's when Allah Taala then revealed this ayat Karima saying, well, you, you should enter Islam completely. So hence, Allah Taala is saying, well, don't not eat uh, camel meat and consume camel milk out of reverence for what you used to do before if someone doesn't eat camel meat doesn't consume drink camel milk all his life he's not a sinner but here Allah Ta'ala is saying this ayat karima because Hazrat Abdullah bin Salam ta'ala, was avoiding them respecting his old tradition respecting his old custom and his old habit and Allah Ta'ala said, no, enter Islam completely. Forget those old habits now. Forget them now. So this is a really um, interesting, uh, in the background of this is to do with customs and breaking bad habits and entering Islam completely. So what does it mean to enter Islam completely in terms of your aqidah, your actions, uh, your your uh, body language, your character, your manner of speech, your customs, your wedding customs, your customs in times of happiness and in times of sadness should all be molded by the Sunnah of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam. So taqwa is not turning halal things into uh, transforming hal halal to haram. Taqwa is avoiding the uh, haram things. Uh, Mufti Ahmad Al Khan Naimi Rahmatullah Ali says some people these days they think look Mehfil Milad uh, celebrating the birth of the Prophet I'll just mention this briefly and pass, come to my topic they're celebrating the birth of the Holy Prophet Ali Islam well it's uh, Bareilly is celebrated but they believe it's Mustahab it's not a Farz or Wajib anyway and some people say it's not permissible uh, so why don't we just not celebrate it to keep everyone happy um, because it's not necessary anyway uh, but Mufti Amdal Khan Nami Rahmatullah says that even that will come under this verse and he compares to that to the story of Hazrat Abdullah uh, bin Salam uh, radiallahu ta'ala anhu uh, that for someone to uh, not celebrate uh, the Mawlid you know taking into consideration respecting or re giving reference to the opinion uh, that some people believe it's not permissible well that's uh, against the major uh, against the majority so the, uh, the idea of Milad and celebrating the birth of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam being haram uh, This is uh, against the majority, it's a false opinion in the first place So to, uh, to accommodate a false opinion uh, 
um, that would be uh, coming in this verse as well uh, to not celebrate the milad uh, to uh, not offend people who believe that celebrating the birthday is not permissible that's similar to Hazrat Abdullah bin Salam who not eating the meat of camels uh, because well they didn't used to do it before because of their old custom so we have to be very careful with this uh, so the best messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam when we talk about becoming coming into Islam completely the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that Islam has 70 or so 70 ish branches 70 something branches uh, and he said that um, removing something harmful from a, from the path from the public path is also one of the branches of Islam and Haya, shame is one of the branches of Islam uh, as well so he sallallahu alayhi wa said when we talk about what is a complete Muslim and what does practicing Islam mean well Islam, yes we talk about five pillars but there's 70 odd branches as well and I really recommend there's some remarkable amazing books written you know, by the Shu'abul Iman Shu'ab means branches the branches of faith there's a book very famous Imam Bayhaqi book and th these are available in English as well many scholars have written what those 77 branches of Islam are and there's some remarkable uh, books you know I've seen a few in English as well some are very detailed and some are very short but the 77 branches of uh, Iman is something uh, really that every Muslim should have a book on this topic in their in their homes um, so bringing my speech to a conclusion uh, I just like to mention one one hadith the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said jab meri ummat dunya ko bari cheez samajhne lagegi to islam ki haibat usse nikal jayegi aur jab neki ka hukm dena aur burai se mana karna chhod degi to wahi ki barkat se mahroom ho jayegi when my ummat uh, is intimidated and holds dearly uh, materialistic things then the respect of islam will depart from its heart and when my ummat, when my followers stop giving each other good advice and encouraging each other to abstain from sins, then they will be deprived of the blessings of revelation. Uh, and when or jab apas me gali galoch ikhtiar karegi to Allah Taala ki ha makame izzat se gir jayegi. When my ummat begins to swear and insult each other then they will lose and fall from the place of respect in the sight in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to remember uh, these things I was reading you know something really interesting uh, because today's topic was about the three main causes of the Muslim downfall uh, you know so many sects a lack of knowledge which is leading to so many divisions inside us number two is personal grudges due to arrogance and not fulfilling duties and also anger and number three was an islamic customs or fuzun and expensive useless customs and that are amongst these are the three things that we should touch on and i've i've not done justice to the topic to talk about in these three huge areas of muslim life in just like 20 odd minutes uh, but there was something interesting i learned from one of my teachers and also i think this is a method when you want to uh, pr problem solving when you want to realize the true cause of a problem uh, the true cause of a pl problem many uh, huge manufacturers and companies use this idea the five why concept so usually we just when we want to know the cause of a problem we'll ask one why why did this happen and you will m uh, most likely the more adequate the more accurate method of ascertaining the true cause of a problem is to ask five whys why did this happen well, why did that happen why did that happen why did that happen why did that happen and it's the fifth why and that will be a more accurate uh, a, you know, as a, a, a diagnosis of what the root cause of that problem as well is it, even though you can ask a sixth or a seventh why as well uh, but five iterations of asking why is generally sufficient to get a root cause uh, so this is a method used by multi-billion uh, you know, pound 
corporations and companies when we want to know the reason for a problem don't just ask one why ask at least five whys and most likely it's the fifth why that's going to be the solution jab bhi kisi masle ka hal chahte hain to sirf ek dafa kyun na puche acha ye kyun hai wo kyun hai wo kyun hai wo kyun jo panchvi kyun hogi wo inshallah asal masle ka hal hoga may allah taala grant us the intellect and the wisdom and the insight to understand what our problems are and to remove our arrogance our personal grudges uh, and our anger as well i'll just finish off on one masala i think it's important that we learn at least one fiqhi masala every single day uh, as well and just regarding fasting you know some people have a habit of biting nails and so biting their lips as well upper or lower lip and sometimes a nail a piece of your nail uh, you can bite it off or chew it off and if it goes down your throat or if a piece of your skin from your lip goes down your throat that will break the fast as well hence uh please be careful uh, obviously we don't want to do anything uh we're fasting we're spending 20 odd hours fasting you don't want to spend all that time avoiding eating and drinking and then breaking and finding out your fast is broken uh, and all that mehnat has gone to waste because of a bit of carelessness so even like uh, chewing uh, you know um, biting one's nails and biting one's lips be careful that you don't break your fast due to that may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive me and forgive you all jazakallah for uh, joining us pre please pray your zuhur Uh, namaz at home um i did so mufti sajid from uh, bradford is of the opinion that you can pray in jamaat as well if you want at home you can pray zuhur and jamaat if you want to as well even though we're doing jamaat here inside the masjid uh, a few of us just a few of us and the other thing is that you can actually pray your zuhur at home even before we've prayed inside the masjid so mufti sajid uh, daud islami mufti in bradford he's of the opinion that um even you are allowed to pray in jamaat as well at home brothers and sisters and you can actually pray before we've prayed inside the masjid as well uh, this is just for these days this usually the rules would be different but, uh, during the lockdown some uh, due to majburi some things have changed may allah taala protect us all jazakallah for your time and for your encouraging comments uh, and for joining us inshallah hopefully the next speech will be on uh, monday jazakallah khairan